All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Eternal Midnight. My name is Santino, and I'm here today with Chad and Kevin. What's going on, man? How are you guys? Pretty good. Yeah. What's going on? I got, I'm doing great. I hope everyone's safe in the house. I hope everyone's uh, doing well, despite, despite what's going on in the world right now. So today got we're Kevin's fever, man. I'm sick of being in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, well, at least we have lots to talk about. So today, finally, we are going to be going into my favorite franchise ever. Today, we, we will be looking into the, fir- the Harry Potter saga. And, and this video will be the first three HP movies. So that is Philosopher's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, and Prisoner of Azkaban. So uh, let, let's just... So um, the first movie, of course, is Philosopher's Stone or for the people in America, Sorcerer's Stone. So <laughs> let's get everyone's first impressions on it. How, how did you guys find it? Kevin, you go first. I think the Philosopher's Stone is a pretty good start to the franchise. It introduces us to the main characters. And I gotta say, like, the acting is okay. Like, I do think the best acting is, you know, when the trio are talking to each other. But I will say, like, you know, the child acting is a bit off at times. Oh, Although, yeah. Deadly. Yeah, and I will say the CGI does feel a bit dated at times, but there is a lot of great practical effects. And, you know, I think the opening is actually a perfect introduction to the entire saga. Because, like, you know, like, you get this buildup of the world we're going to see now, you know, introduces us to the wizarding world and Harry Potter. And, like, as soon as it gets to, like, the title, you truly feel like you're in for like the greatest ride of your life like Mm -hmm. it is just it is just great the movie was pretty hilarious i thought i had lots of laughs it was it was pretty cool i liked how you know we were like the audience in harry you know like when he's going through you know he's like learning about this world you know we're learning about it with him so that's that was like a cool connection like that i felt with harry because we were starting to learn with you know with harry and you know, the casting, like, while the act, like the acting can be a bit off, but I felt like the casting was just perfect. I felt like everyone was, you know, I could see everyone as that character. Like, you know, Daniel Radcliffe played a good Harry, Emma Watson played a good Hermione, and uh, Ripper Grint played a uh, great Ron. And I just thought that was just amazing how each of these characters were done, like, so well in these films. And, like... If there was like a theme, like I noticed, the theme I noticed was like reality versus desire, you know, because mm-hmm. like here, like uh, you know, at the end Harry was, you know, considering maybe joining Voldemort because you know he might bring his parents back, but you know the reality is they're dead, so he must, you know, he must accept that, fully accept that, and you know, take down Voldemort to basically save his friends and Hogwarts. Yeah, I, I do love I do love that scene at the end with the mirror and um, Voldemort's basically like the devil tempting him like join me and we can bring them back and then the the reflections of the parents are um, ref- um shown in the mirror and then they just disappear and Harry knows that they're really gone so he just says like you're lying and the attack yeah like I thought that was that was like very interesting and like if there are a few more things I could bring up um I feel like the pacing like um like in the first act was pretty fast. And I thought, you know what, that makes sense. Cause you know, we got to introduce it, you know, we've got to get it ro- rolling and then it slows down in the second act. And you know what, that makes sense. Cause we have to learn about the world a little more, but I will say it does slow down a bit too much. I felt like we focused a little too much on introducing and setting up the world. Like it felt a little too slow for me. And, uh, in, in it's, the the third, it's the genesis of the entire saga. You have to like put in, I mean, Stop yeah, me. but it just felt a little too slow for my tastes, at least. And the third act was actually very interesting for me. And it did feel a little intense at times when, you know, the trio had to face these trials and all that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's insane. In fact, okay, to defend, well, I'll, I'll have to defend the acting a bit. Because think about it. This is like HP, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone released in 2001. And at that time, when you have a kid actor in your movie, especially when it's the main focus, it's not going to be really good. Just like you, 
like watch Spy Kids, watch Shark Boy and Lava Girl. The, the acting is like it's abysmal. Like it's really bad. <laughs> but like, and of course, like there's some acting scenes in the movie which are bad. Like there's the iconic uh, Seamus Finnegan moment where he basically just talks like I'm half and half. My dad's a muggle. My mom's a. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically that. That is basically like that is wow, man. Like you need to improve. But but. <laughs> I, I I felt like the main trio did what they did what they really could to you know show um bring the bring the characters to life. I mean yeah, some of it was not as good as we intended, and as we grow to the other films, we see how well their acting becomes. But at this point, I didn't, I, I thought it was okay. I mean like I mean I understand that I like I let it slide a little bit, but um you know. I feel like the best moments were when, like, you know, the trio were together because I felt like that's where yeah, I genuinely believed, like, you know, they were, like, friends, you know, they were talking to each other and all that. Like, I thought they were general – that was genuinely good acting there. The best. But there were, like, other moments where I felt like their acting was just a bit off. But I, yeah. I'm not going to think it's, like, you know, it's the worst acting because I think they, they, they did a pretty good job for what they had and all that. The best, the the best thing about this movie is basically the genesis of the di- of the trio of what we will see. Like these are we 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 will f- be following this trio until the end of part two. So it's nice to look back on it and see like, oh, hey, you know, remember when they were so young and cute and all that, and where they were just yeah, young? that was, that's like that's probably the best part, you know, like going back and seeing you know how much they'll eventually grow into soon. And then what I think about this movie, like what I really think about it more is this movie as i rewatched it recently it is so it's so silly like it really is silly i mean well, it's the most it, it's definitely and even looking back and thinking and remembering the books because it's been a year since i've read the books yeah. the first one was definitely the lightest of all the books when it came to tone so i think getting christopher columbus to be the director the same guy who did you know like home alone I think they they genuinely went with a good director to go with the lightest tone of all of the stories. Someone who did a good job working with kids in the movies he directed. Um, so I thought he was perfect for it. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. I'm not. It's not. It's not a knock against the film. Right. No, I'm agreeing because. And I mean, then even going forward, it's almost like I'm almost glad they replaced him after part two because yeah, I don't think he would have been able to handle some of the darker moments that were coming as the series went on. So. Yeah, I just, I definitely think Christopher Columbus was a great choice for this one. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Like, um, well, J.K. Rowling, J.K. Rowling, when he, when she made um Philosopher's Stone, uh, this is a, this is a remember this is a point in her life where she didn't know how far this was gonna go. So she basically just put all her silliness and all her ideas in this movie. And I know this because look how silly it is. Like. Hermione admits, supposedly, or she lies to the professor saying, I let the troll in because I was curious. And she gets five points knocked down. But when you go out into the Forbidden Forest, you get 50 each knocked down. Can you see the <laughs> the insanity there? It's like, man, this is really... So like, they just, need to set their priorities. Yeah, because like, you, like, you, you, you can see that like, she's not... J.K. Rowling herself is really just trying to make it as silly as possible because she doesn't know where this is gonna go so i'm she's, she just hit like the i'm gonna throw everything in their button like you know i'm just gonna put all my ideas in there. i don't really care if it doesn't make any sense but but for but look it is cool and you can tell like this is where like the ideas that, that she put in this movie or in the book are so unique like seriously this is where i really feel like they really made like hogwarts itself it still is iconic to this day the, the that scene where yeah. they that scene where they go um on the boats and you first see the castle i mean it's still mm-hmm. it's still jaw-dropping and breathtaking and i no, it is it still has that extremely like epic feel to it where it's like it's the same thing it's like that same feeling of like first time you watch star wars and you see the death star or the hoth battle this seeing the castle it's just like wow that's cool yeah, yeah that that introduction, like, you know, you're just like, they're on the boats, and then as soon as camera moves up, we see Hogwarts. It's just beautiful. And that score starts playing. 
Oh, the score that like John Williams was great for like the first three films. Like the John scores were was so good for the first three films. And that post I made in the squadron, like I said, that in my opinion, H the H HP has a more iconic, diverse score than Star Wars. That's just my opinion, but I, that, yeah, <laughs> can have with everyone. Yeah, yeah, that's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do like a lot of scores from Harry Potter. I mean, like, dude, there are so many... No, like, they are. They're very memorable, and they are very well done, I think. I agree. Yeah, so... um, And, of course, like, okay, yeah, I, I will have to agree with Kevin at some points. Like, some effects are dated, like, that Quidditch match. match. Oh, the troll looks terrible. The troll um, looks terrible. The Quidditch match, yes. When Harry's oh, broom when... is, like, knocking against the wall, it's so... It looks so bad in retrospect. Yeah, it looks... It, I'm pretty it, sure some people were... did Like, there were some CGI people as well. Cause like yeah. one uh one keeper looked like you know their face looked a little video game kind of probably yeah, yeah because like this is this is this is 2001 you know you 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 didn't really have the best effects yeah we're still coming out of the late 90s of the CGI boom so it's like I mean I would have liked to have seen a full practical effect troll like we had in like you know Jurassic Park but it's it is what it is yeah I, I mean understand. what can you do I mean like but. Um, some some visual effects, in fact, in this movie hold up. I'm, well, I'm not sure if this was visual or practical, but the chess match was really well done. That's the my chess favorite. match was a mix of both, I believe. Oh, okay. So yeah, the chess match was really well done. I think that that's my favorite scene in the entire movie because I'm biased to Ron and I think he's one of the best characters. The way he strategized to to beat the chess set was in, was so well done. I think I I I feel. So yeah, I, uh, I like. The chess match looks cool. The chess match was insane. I loved it. And um, I mean, I, here's here's what I would say about like Philosopher's Stone. Like I felt like it was like a great seed for the franchise. You know, they planted the seeds now. Now it's time for like you know the series to finally grow. You know, to expand to you know improve upon it basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like that's why that's why I put it as like my least best. Like it's it's very good. But now, like, you know, the other films can look at it, see, you know, take some of the good stuff they'd had and, you know, take some out the bad stuff and, you know, make it really great. Exactly. Yeah, what did the audience problem. like? What didn't they like? And now it's time to improve. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, like, um, I, I like the fact that they were able to to show what show the universe and um, expand on the parts that were good. Like, I, I'm... I'm kind of disappointed to be honest that Quidditch wasn't really a main focus in the like, the next films. Like it was kind of sidelined, really. I mean, you know, like Quidditch. I mean, they weren't it, that important, though. If I'm like completely honest. Yeah, I know it's I I know it's not as important as like the main story, but I would have. But it was always a good time, like to watch it, to like read about it. in the books. It was always like a good time to read about the Quidditch match and like de-stress from the main story. But I get why they didn't have the time to put it in always, so that's fine. And the Quidditch match does get better. Like the Azkaban Quidditch match yeah. is one of the best. And we'll get to that later because um, Azkaban is like the third movie. And we have Chamber of Secrets to go through. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So um, I, 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 I want to talk about first for a while, just for a bit, the uh, the adult cast. Because we talked about the kids. We didn't talk about the adults. Like yeah. um, Aggie Smith as McGonagall is like, that's number one. That's like iconic. I don't think. Yeah, she, I swear. She's always looked like that. <laughs> like the, like she's always looked like an old woman i feel like no but she's so like she's like she looks the exact same in this as she did in hook and hook came out in the 90s <laughs> i swear like that she, that, I mean, that she is, does a great job i'm not knocking that i'm just saying it's like she always just looks like an old woman it's hilarious oh, well but Come on, she acts well. I mean, like you know. I don't. I, hey, I'm not just <laughs> it at all. <laughs> That's what I'd Jen's say. Saying. I was um, I was probably most impressed. I'd have to say by um, uh, Alan Rickman though. Oh yeah, yes, I, I mean, probably... this was just the beginning. I'd say he got more. Scr what movie was the one he was barely in? It was three, right? It was four. four. I thought it was Out of Fire. Yeah, it was four. He he had like one one scene, and that was it. Yeah. No, he had like a, no, he had like. Like three, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I, I um the screen time for I would recommend was like five minutes only. Like there's a scene like um Goblet of the Fire, all Snape scenes, and he has like five minutes worth of screen. <laughs> yeah, cause like he Snape is sidelined in Goblet of the Fire, but he man that first 
scene in the Portion Scott's room where he enters and he just basically berates Harry. I mean, he literally sets the tone of what his character is going to be like. He yeah. storms in, slams the door, rushes up front, and starts barking out orders. Yeah, I mean, like, he's like, like, when I saw it for the first strict. time, like, I, I, I was scared of him. Like, I really was scared. Like, man, you are, man, you are scary. And I have my opinions on Snape as a character, but we'll get to that at the end of movie six, Half Blood Prince. Mm. But, um, I really like, I, I love Alec Murakwan. He did a very good performance, Rest His Soul. I think this is his most iconic role. Like, next to Hans. Oh, Gruber, easily. Die yeah, easily. He'll most be like, remembered for Snape forever. Yeah, next to Hans Gruber from Die Hard, this is, this is the one. Yeah, where he I was think, great in Die Hard as well. Yeah, this is the one where he, like, man, you are insane in this movie. So I, I really, I, I, that's one, that's one of those characters, like, for example, like, Walken Phoenix. Everyone says, oh, he embodies the Joker. Like, I agree. Alan Rickman embodies Snape, like, to the bone marrow. He just, his stance, his, the way he carries himself, it's insane. Mm -hmm. And, um, one thing, uh, w since he's only in two films, Rick, uh, Richard Harris as Dumbledore. What do you think of him? Um, I think he's, I think he's a pretty good Dumbledore. You know, like the wise, you know, kind of Dumbledore. Like he's a pretty, he's pretty good in that area. But in terms of like, um, someone brought this up. Like, you know, in terms of like, you know, maybe being like a, maybe it like a presence to like, you know, that Voldemort even fears. He no. he doesn't <laughs> seem he doesn't fit that area, but like. I mean, he's only in the first two films, so I can't really knock him for that. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, um, we don't know exactly what, what would have happened if... I like, I mean, I liked him, but at the same time, almost on, like, later rewatches, I'm like, I never could have seen this guy pulling off the second half of Half-Blood Prince. Oh, yeah. Or, or I was like, I just could not see it. This guy, I mean, th he did a fine job, but they just picked somebody who was too old almost yeah i mean like, i mean I, i'm pretty sure he was forced into it because like i'm pretty sure like one of his uh i forgot who it was like relatives like a lot younger relative like wouldn't speak to him if he didn't take the role of dumbledore right. and then he passed like, away luck, and i'm pretty sure he thought like people were not going to remember his other accomplishments as an actor they were just going to remember him as dumbledore yeah well yeah. Maybe, I mean, to be fair, he did a fine job as the kindly Dumbledore, and the books weren't. Book five wasn't made at this time when Philosopher's Stone came. Right. Out. Yeah. They just. It was also. It was just up on reading the book, and then looking at the way he acted. He just. He seemed to like. He had a little more. Uh, in the book, at least, he had a little more of like a quirkiness to him that he did not yeah. embody in the movie. Yeah, exactly. I feel like that was embodied better by uh, Michael Gambon. Michael Gambon has like. A, I'll, I'll be real, but he has the Sometimes. balance. He has the yeah, balance. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to the, we'll get to um, a controversial <laughs> scene you and I have talked about in part four. Oh yeah, you know that scene, Kevin. I'm sure you know. Oh, like you know, I noticed a few stuff actually from Goblet of Fire. Now, I, I come up with the conclusion, so we'll get there eventually. <laughs> yeah, we'll get there eventually because Goblet of Fire is like the next video. It's just only one, two, three. But uh, you know, we're we're on the here right now, so um. So, yeah, yeah, so I think we covered a lot of it. I agree, yeah. So yeah. Philosopher's Stone, Sorcerer's Stone, whatever you want to call it, even though Nicholas Flamel's not a sorcerer, he was a philosopher. Um, <laughs> yeah. Overall, yeah, I'd say this was like you said, Kevin. It was a great start, and now was the time for them to be like, all right, what did we make mistakes on? What do we need to improve on? And let's just dive right into the next one. Yeah, okay, yeah. the next one is... All right, next one. Her uh, coming out like a year yeah. after Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. This movie to me is so underrated. It is proper sequel. It really is. I agree. I actually think it was better than the original, even though it was longer. Like I actually thought the pacing for this film was actually was much. Better. Better. Yeah, the pacing. This movie went by faster than Philosopher's Stone, in my opinion. This really mm -hmm. did. It. It, like, it was. I was I was engaged throughout the movie, you know, because, like, it was kind of like they're kind of going through, like, a murder mystery almost. Like, you know, like, they're trying yeah. to, like, solve this mystery on, like, you know, what's, like, what's the monster attacking? Who opened the Chamber of Secrets? You know, like, it's just, it's just very interesting. I like it's basically that. basically a mystery, like, at its heart. Harry Potter, usually, like, the first two books are a mystery. Like, it's basically a mystery in a magical school. 
Like I'm in the first sure it's basically in its blood, basically, because there's mm-hmm. usually at least some sort of mystery. Yeah, there usually is. Like usually, like, even out, even at the end, where it's like all all out war, there is some mystery in what the horror boxes are. So yeah, so Harry Potter always has a mysterious element to it. But this one's one where I really loved it because because children are they're not dying, but they're being petrified, right? And I guess J.K. Rowling yeah, that's dabbling in the darkness now. Yeah, yeah. It's like she didn't she didn't go on full dark, but she kind of she kind of made it darker a bit. Like, oh, students are turning to stone. What shall we do? And she 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 alludes to the fact that uh, a girl died before, but she it's never mm-hmm. explicitly shown. But Chamber of Secrets has like, a lot of iconic scenes. Like when I rewatched it, I love. And the- I, I will say it did have probably my favorite laughing moment of the entire franchise, though. Which <laughs> when <laughs> Professor Sprout was showing them the um. Oh my god, what are they called? The little plants. The mandrakes? The mandrakes, the mandrakes and Neville just passes out. And she's <laughs> yeah. like, oh no, did he hear the scream and pass out? And they're like, no, he fainted. And she's just like, oh, well, just leave him there. Leave him. <laughs> yeah, just leave him there. That was hilarious. That like, was. If here's the thing I noticed, actually. With the film, like, I felt like, you know, it was kind of like, there were lots of similar scenes to the Philosopher's Stone, except they added this, like, strange, like, twist to it. So like whenever it mirrors a scene, they like they add this weird twist to it. Like um when they're going well, to forget, it was the same director one. as part one, so he probably was just like, you know, got to do the same thing but a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like with platform nine three quarters, like Harry just goes in and is like, you know, he just in, he's in awe. But in the second one, like you know, he tries to get in, get to the platform nine three quarters, he just can't get in. Yeah, he just can't get it. I, I I I I love the flying car scene. I love the I love, oh, the, I love that music. I love the, 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 the um basically this this just shows how good Ron of a how good a friend Ron is. Like he basically think about it. He stole his dad's car to rescue <laughs> him from the <laughs> worst type of people. The worst type of people. The Dursleys. We haven't talked. We didn't talk about them in Flosser Stone, but the Dursleys are the absolute scum of the earth. I mean, Vernon, Petunia, and Dudley are like. I think there are worse scum in the wor- earth, especially. Oh, we'll talk about that in future. But right now, they are pretty bad. I mean, like them and Malfoy are like the, the epitome of what not to look for in a human being. Like seriously. Mm-hmm. Actually, I mean, wait. No. Speaking of Malfoy, like here's a strange thing I actually noticed with the film. Like, you know, in like the first film, you know, they were focusing on the lighthearted, you know, like the you know, the bright side of the wizarding world. And this one, it tackles more on the darker sides of the wizarding world, which right. I found very interesting. Right. I, yeah, I, like I, the slavery of Dobby and... Yeah, yeah. That, that's you know, like... Um, Malfoy's dad was just, like, Malfoy, pure evil. Jason Isaac. Jason and, Isaac. and, like, a racism parallel here. It was, just, it was just, like, interesting. Like, I found the peril, real-world parallels to be very interesting. Yeah, basically... Basically, right now, it's like J.K. Rowling introduces the theme of, like, um, wh- who is superior, who is not, because that that's never mentioned in the first one. And, like, um, J.K. Rowling, um, basically, this is, like, the racism of the wizarding world. Like, um, people who are not born out of pure blood families are muggle-born, you know? And they're so, and so, to some people, they're mudbloods, which is, like, which and is, they, like... And they really built on that much more, I thought, and, um... Deathly Hallows Part One with the court scenes. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, and, like, you know, well, we'll get to that eventually. We'll get to but that. I feel like this was like the beginning where we like you know kind of see of how like you know they're kind of like other real world regimes like you know like the Nazis. So I thought that was interesting that yeah, they. And, they, and basically, Draco is basically the Nazi or like the the kid well, Nazi. Okay? I don't remember if they described it as thoroughly in the movie as they did in the book. But I remember in the book, they went pretty into detail about Salazar Slytherin's thoughts of what his house should be and what yeah. Hogwarts yeah, should be. Yeah, they did mention that. They, they mentioned okay. the book, but like in, in the movie in passing, but in the book, it's really detailed on how he yeah. really wanted the pure blood superiority. And you can see how Draco was really like brought up into this like um, this Mental. mindset of I'm superior because I was born in a pure, in a wizard, a pure mm-hmm. wizarding family. And, and it's, it's, well, and it also showed a different type of superiority because even Ron, who was also a pure blood, he just looked completely down upon. Yeah, but yeah, because and he, he had zero, he had zero respect for both Harry and Ron. 
And they're both pure bloods. Yeah, that's it. No, Harry's half blood. Uh, no, both his parents were wizards and witches. Oh, oh yeah. Well, but, Lily was muggle born, though. Yeah, Lily was muggle born, so it doesn't count. It's only pure blood oh. if two were from both wizards. Oh, okay. Blood. Fair enough. Well, yeah. you guys know it better than I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, that, 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 that's the thing. Like, you know, Drake was basically the equivalent here of a racist. Like, she basically, he basically mm. calls Hermione the equivalent of the N word in our in our real world uh, society because like, like and he's just so evil like that, they that, definitely that, stepped him up from the first movie I thought like, like there's, in the first there's movie he felt up, like in the first movie he felt almost like a Bart Simpson in this one he was like full on just evil I thought this guy's this guy's a dick like he like that scene where he where he where he where he um Harry and Harry and Ron are apologizing to Crab and Goyle, and Jacob Balfoy is just like saying, Saint Potter, I can't believe he's, people think he's the heir of Slytherin. And he says, like, the last time my, my father told me, the last time my, um, the, 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 chamber was over, oh, the chamber was open, a mudblood died. Between you and me. It can't work. You're not allowed to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Between Don't you say and me. Again. Yeah, sorry. I'm not allowed to say that. But, like, Basically, Draco said, between you and me, I hope Granger dies. Like, he literally wanted Hermione Granger, a little girl at this point in time, to get killed by the bastards. Yeah, and these, the, and just for people who might have forgotten, they're 12 years old at this point, and this is how he's talking at 12. Yeah, like, dude, yeah. I, he's hoping a girl in his class dies because she's not a pure blood. Oh. I mean, that's just, like, that's just almost, like, sick. <laughs> in a way like another thing i i noticed was that there's more attention on like a rivalry between like harry and draco you know like uh yeah yeah with the, like with the duel and the quidditch match like there was a lot more attention on that mm-hmm. yeah exactly and like um i think a lot the quidditch match um right now is like it's still not as good as it's still i thought dangerous. it was much better actually i thought it was pretty like, yeah, good better. i'm pretty convinced by there, it there, that that scene with the bludgers chasing Harry like a heat-seeking missile. That was. I'll really just cool. always remember the broken arm scene. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he had no bones. Bad. So I just realized we so haven't talked about Lockhart yet. Oh, the Lockhart. best defense against the dark arts teacher ever. Oh, <laughs> I, um, I, 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 I love the back scene. This is pretty cool. I love, I love Kenneth him. Branagh. He's perfect for the part. I love how I, I love how he later on directed Thor. The jokes for that is just funny. <laughs> I, I I love I love how how he's so how he's so like good at being a bad teacher. Like he like when he, <laughs> <laughs> when, he's just so charming. Like I like, can't hate him for some reason. Like when he when, like I love, I love that scene like where he throws his robe and the the schoolgirls grab it because like yeah that's right you know how cool I am and I I love how that is and like I love how. I love how he's like, you know, um, he the, the 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 detention he serves Harry is literally answering his fan mail. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> and we haven't really and <laughs> and uh, I I love that scene where he's like, where like where he's about to mend the bro- broken arm and Harry says, no 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 no, it's okay, I don't need no, you. No, not you. No, not, not you. Not you. Anyone Doesn't but know you. What he's talking about. Uh, <laughs> I love. And we haven't really talked about him yet, but uh, Hagrid, Hagrid was really good in this, like the first two. Oh, I I really love Hagrid. He's so sweet and adorable and lovable. I want to just give him a hug, like you know, just give him a hug, never let go. Yeah, because like he's he's just he's so pure, he's so innocent, like and and I I I I love that scene. Well, I don't I I don't I don't love what happens, but I love that scene where Harry goes back. And show to the memory and shows and it see it, it shows how Tom Riddle basically framed Hagrid to be like this bad guy when he was like the most innocent guy ever. That, that's that's one of those. Oh, things hey, I, that was another example of the Slytherin superiority. Yeah, exactly. Like, right there, Tom Riddle's like, I'm good at what I do. This guy's a freak. Hmm, I'll just say it's his fault. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's yeah. like yeah, and it shows us it, it shows like how like. Like before, before the reveal, before the reveal of Tom Riddle was Voldemort, I really, I really had the suspicion of maybe Hagrid actually did open the sec- the chamber secrets when I read the book. Yeah, like, like I was yeah, like by accident or something. Yeah, exactly. Like, 
and man, that man, but to this day, that scene scare that scene gives me like the chills when I when I watch the uh, when I watch the scene of the spiders. Oh, dude, that is so painful. Mm. That is like it, I hate bugs. I hate bugs in any form. So when I saw that the when the spiders drop down from the entire scene, like, I I I have to like you know like so I you heard. so you felt just like R- Rupert Grant. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's <what I> do. <laughs> Shh, <definitely>. quiet. <laughs> and, like, yeah, I, I, I love his acting in that, in that part where he where he basically uses his finger to point up, and all of the spiders are just descending. Like dude, I, I I would freak out. And here's here's a funny like here's a funny side story. When I when I wrote the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, the ride, the Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. There's a part there where the broom, because you're on a broom, right? There's a part there where it goes into the forbidden forest and you see the spiders. Oh, and, no. my, and my brother, because he's he's just like he's just that kind of guy, decided to mimic the spiders' events by grabbing my ribs. Like, <laughs> I, like oh my god, can you stop? Because I was really freaking out, man. So yeah, yeah, cause I, I hate bugs. So like, even at that point when I watched the Chamber of Secrets, like, I always cringe when I see the spiders. But you know, but you know the the spiders themselves, they're really the the effects improve. Like they don't look as bad as the troll did in in part yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the basilisk the basilisk itself. Oh, uh, it was great. It was great, dude. I I I I, it I was, love the chase. Like um, it was pretty cool. It was like it was pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, the, like a nice cat mouse. Kind of yeah, the, where... And I liked how they still were incorporating um, CGI and practical effects. Like when Fox died and he came back, that was a practical effect as the baby. Oh, 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 yeah. I, actually, wait, no, I, I shouldn't be surprised that by that. <laughs> yeah, because when when Fox died and he comes back, like, it, it looks so real. And and um, what 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 else we have to talk about? Dobby, Dobby. We, we don't talk about. We haven't talked about Dobby yet. So here's like, something with Dobby. Or, I know I because I've talked to some people who've said before they're just like you know why didn't Harry just tell him okay I won't go back to school to get him to be quiet and I'm like because twelve year olds don't think that way. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, at age twelve, you you don't think fast enough on your feet to immediately just lie and go along with it. You're gonna immediately. No, you're not my mom or dad. You can't tell me what to do. Of course I'm going to go back. So it's like, that's, I mean, in retrospect, yeah, us at our age, we'd probably just be like, yeah, absolutely, I'll listen to you just to get them to go away. But a 12-year-old, probably not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, um, yeah, can, like, when I saw Dobby, that was when I knew, like, you, I could tell the CGI has, like, greatly improved. Yeah, mm-hmm. because Dobby, Dobby at the time, he looks, he looks well done. He looks like, he looks like he's, He's uh his voice they, did just get a little grating to me though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to be fair, but like, I um, mean, I I can't imagine what it would have been, but there were times where I'm like, oh my god, this character is annoying me so much with his voice. Yeah, yeah, same. same. I like Dobby's voice. Yeah. I don't know why. I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, like, um, his voice it's is the best like, of Oh, that was a horrible Dobby impression. <laughs> But Master yeah, Harry you cannot return to the castle. <laughs> <laughs> Master Harry should have not returned to Hogwarts. Oh, God. Santino, <laughs> <laughs> you are the Harry Potter fan. You should be doing this. <sighs> okay, I'll, I'll do one just for the video. <laughs> Harry Potter must not go to school. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was actually better than mine. Yeah, <laughs> see? All right, yeah, see? Yeah. One of, you know what also one of the practic- practical effects I like? The Wombing mm. Willow. The Wombing Willow. Yes. In, in was Chamber- it? Yeah, in Chamber of Secrets, yes. In, not in Prison of Azkaban. In Chamber oh, of Secrets. Okay. Because in, Chamber- in Prison of Azkaban, it has the vines and all that. It, it yeah, goes- yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but in Chamber of Secrets, like, it just had like the animatronics moving around, bashing the car in. So, yeah, mm-hmm. that was insane. I like that. And and to be honest, one of my favorite scenes is, is that scene where... where uh, they get caught entering the castle, and uh, Snape Snape just basically berates them again and says, "You were spotted by no less than seven muggles." Nothing and they like- already had a newspaper talking. I also about. like the <laughs> I like that part. They just have it already. I also like the silence. He's like, "Silence, silence, silence!" Like, 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 like rest he- assured, were you two in Slytherin, your fate rested with me, the you- both of you. Would be on the train home. 
Tell me what the fuck uh, is. It doesn't serious. <laughs> we got old Dumbledore come stumbling in. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. They are not. <laughs> They are not, as it so happens. And then what? They got what? Five points knocked off, I think, in detention? Yeah, no, they got detention. Okay, so they get 50 they points the letters this person to their parents. for being outside the middle of the night. But they flew a flying car and got spotted and only got five points in one night their detention. Their point system is just weird. The point like, is so insane. We need to see what system they have. Like, what I works? Know. How do you judge that? Like, you should, should, a person, should five they points. honestly oh, have look. been expelled for that? Yeah, they should have probably, probably shouldn't they have probably been arrested for that. I mean, they probably have you noticed Dumbledore just like gives any points to Gryffindor. He's just like, let's. <laughs> they broke every rule. Let's give them points. No, like I, I, I love how they, I love how Harry and Ron just don't think like adults because they're like kids. They well, never, yeah. like, they never thought to send because they, their owls are with them. They never thought like let's send a message to Hogwarts that we missed the scene. <laughs> Or this All they had to do, well, and their parents had to come back for the car. Yeah. So, <laughs> just no, stand there and wait. No, the car. They like, the car. They yeah, they the obviously could have apparated home, but of course they were going to go back and get the car. Or at least one of them were. Yeah, because they, they would not leave the car there unattended, right? So they, so I love how, I love it. I love how they just, like, screw it, let's just drive to Hogwarts in the flying <laughs> car. Like, how do you follow the train? Like, you cannot... <laughs> You Just follow the tracks. Yeah, follow the yellow brick road. No, but like, can you memorize it? Can Something you I always wondered, real quick, I want to dive into it. How does the train, get, what happens if a plane or a helicopter starts following the Hogwarts Express? Oh, yeah. I mean, what <laughs> What are they going to do? Like, what, isn't there like a point or something where they have some magic pretty up sure where they like, have protective you, like change like, your mind yeah. and turn around or something like that i'm pretty sure they have, i'm pretty sure they have like it control. had the same stuff up that hermione did in deathly hallows part one to their campsites right yeah something like that probably only, like only, by thirty thousand though times that by that right yeah. but that, that that's the thing i i'll to be fair i i don't know how i don't know how that happens i really really don't like, um, like, here's the thing we haven't mentioned, though. Like, when Harry starts questioning, like, you know, like, whether he should be in Slytherin or not, like, and the the scene where, like, he's speaking in Parseltongue, like, that was creeping me out a little bit. Like, when he was mm-hmm. speaking in Parseltongue. Like, we already know he could talk to snakes, but the way it was framed and the people's reaction, including Snape's, they were, like, terrified. Yeah, dude, because, like, cause, like Parseltongue's such, like, um, it, it never explicitly stated on how Parseltongue is made in the books like they don't um there's no language but when harry does it it's like wow dude like i i was like it sounds like some sort of alien language that like yeah that freaked me out like, it's insane and like i liked it you know where like harry was like questioning like you know his like uh whether he was in the right house or not but like you know he learns like you know his choices like basically are the reason why he's in gryffindor like you know like, he fought bravely against the Basilisk and all that. Like, you know, he wanted to be in – he didn't want to be slip in Slytherin. So, like, you know, I do like that message how, like, you know, your choices are important. This movie really yeah. is identity. Like, identity. Like, um, because you're in Gryffindor doesn't mean you really are. Like, or are you really in the, you know, Slytherin, which is considered the bad house, which it's really not because there are good Slytherins. But – I have a friend who's a Slytherin, and they're pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> – so um, that's the thing, you know. Uh, it's really about ident- identity and like questioning if you are, if you really are, gonna gonna be, are, if you really are part of this world, if you really belong in the house you belong to. But yeah, that that, that that's what I really love about Change of Secrets. You know, it's basically a proper sequel that, I mean, it shows. I mean, it, okay, Hogwarts is the given. There's a danger inside it. There's new monsters, new spells, new. I mean, it just builds on everything that was good about the first one. Well, because they estab- they spent so much time in the first one establishing so much that by the time we get back to school now, they don't need to go over it. They don't need to show what exactly. the school layout is like. They don't need to show everyone yeah. getting the first day of classes. The only real like, one they did that on was uh, Defense Against the Dark Arts, and that's only because it was a new teacher. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's what I found annoying about the books was like, you know, like by the second book and for the rest of them, they were just like, Oh, this happened in the previous one. I'm like, okay, I get it already. You don't need to remind me. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, but um, that's the thing. You know, for the books, cause it, it has to be written differently just to remind some 
Some people yeah. might forget. But I don't. But 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 I don't. I don't mind the fact that um, in Chamber of Secrets, the movie, they really just went all out. Like, like, you know how this works because you've seen the first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why yeah. I, I liked it. It was pretty good. So yeah. should we so, move on to uh, the next? Yeah, so Chamber of Secrets, really good movie, really great time. It's better than the first one. The next one is what most people consider the absolute best of the franchise. And, yes, and I don't understand why. I, don't, I, I like I, Prisoner of Azkaban, but I don't understand, I don't understand why, I mean, why I could, so many people hold it in such high regard like it's the best. I, I don't it, see how it's it, the best. It, it, I mean, it may be because, like, the Prisoner of Azkaban, it's very unique, like, in terms of... Uh, well, the style like, completely like, basically changed. Basically, everything I mean, is just We got so a new weird. director, so it's not Columbus anymore. It's just... Everything felt like it completely changed. The tone, the style. I mean, even everyone's clothes. I mean, how often did we even see them wearing their school robes anymore? Yeah, because um, Quaron, to be fair, I like what I like what he said that he wanted to make them look more real. So Hermione's always like always in form with her uniform, and Ron's just and Ron and Harry are like just so careless. But I but I don't hate Prisoner of Azkaban. I, I really love it. I really love those. I love it as well, actually. I do think it's, like, pretty high tier. I yeah, really I it. think, I mean, on my ranking, I think I have it at, like, number three. So it's, like, I really yeah, enjoy my, it. I just don't understand how people say it's the best. I, I, I love how, I love those small moments, like, those character moments where um, the the boys are just, like, eating the candies and, um, Harry has each one and his, his ears just flare up with like smoke. I thought that was really, you know, like it just shows that these are, these are still kids, you know, they're, they mm-hmm. like, here's, here's the thing I noticed. Like the first one, you know, focused on the bright, happy stuff of the wizarding world. Second one, the dark, you know, dark stuff of the wizarding world and the prisoner of Azkaban, it focuses more on like the really weird and strange stuff in the wizarding world, like more stranger than like the previous two, in my I mean, opinion. Like, the Prisoner of Azkaban was one okay, I was trying to experience. It was the first movie I watched of Harry Potter in theaters. And I had to leave because I I was so young when I saw the Dementors and that that was just scary. The Dementors in this movie are so well done. They improve I, later, but I think they're really good here. Like I saw the prison I'm pretty sure the Prisoner of Azkaban was the first movie I saw, but I only saw like maybe like a few seconds of it and then I probably changed the channel because I only remember seeing some scenes of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it, 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 it's it, the prison mask man it's shot really well i think we can all agree on that like the, the scene yeah. where one of my favorite yeah scenes, one of my favorite scenes is the where the mirror scene is just like i love how the camera like you know it moves into the mirror but yeah then it, like yeah. you know then it just looks like it's heading to the people like it's just it's just so weird yeah it's so insane and i I, I, I love that I love that um I love that scene where Harry takes Buckby for a ride and that awesome score just swells and you oh, hear, and, and, I think that's one of the best changes from the book in my opinion. Like yeah. you know like Harry didn't really enjoy the ride in the book but like in the film he like enjoys Buckby's ride. I was like, "Yes." Yeah, I, I loved it. But but um I love the I love the the entire climax of Prisoner of Azkaban is insane. I love it. I love I, I love it as well. Like I love the fact that Sirius and Snape argue like you can tell there's so much bitterness in there. And then, like, you can tell, like, there's so, so much past in history. I love the fact that there's, like, I love the fact that the back-in-time sequence is so, it's so well done. I love the time travel in that movie. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. I, thought, I, thought, I love that, like, I love the music. Like, I actually noticed, like, for most of the, like, for most of the entire scene, you can actually hear a little ticking in the background. Like, I thought yeah. that was a nice detail. Yeah, because, it's, yeah, yeah, because, like, you can tell, like, time, Time is like the main theme in this movie. Like, there's so many times where it focuses on clocks or ticking, because like you know you can you can feel like you know the time is of the essence and there's a lot of things that um need to be done. So I like I, I love that I love I love the time travel. I love when Hermione punches Malfoy. It's one of the most satisfying things. Ever. Oh, well, that is one. I actually things. wanted to I actually wanted to build on that for a second because I was just thinking about that scene when I watched it. To me, that's one of, like, probably the most defining scene that finally separates Malfoy and his group from Harry and his group. Because at that point, it's basically, he's, we see it and we realize, no, he can say whatever he wants going forward. He's never going to be as good at magic as these three, ever. Like, that scene just proved it, where it was like, these three are always going to be superior to him. 
because he's got nothing on them. Like you see the fear in his face when she when Hermione puts her wand right in his face. He's ready to cry. He knows he has nothing when he's going up against her at that point. Exactly. So it's, all he has is his words. That's all he'll ever have going forward, and he knows it. Yeah, and yeah. He, and, and, and I love that, I love at this point, um, Harry who just basically like his his um his mo when dealing with Malfoy was ignore ignore ignore. Now he's like he's he's fighting back. Ron is fighting back. Hermione is fighting back because Malfoy is a bully, like through and through. Like I don't I, I don't yeah. I don't give a shit when a Draco says what I say. Oh, but he's just a child. Like, yeah, it doesn't excuse you for being a dick, you know? You know, like, I I really, you know, I, like, hate Draco. You know, like, the films did a good job on that. Like, the first three especially, I'm just like, this guy needs to shut up. Like, I swear to God, I'm going to get a chair and smash it at his face. Dude, and I, 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 and I, what's weird is, like, um, when some people in the fandom, in the HP fandom, like, just because he was he didn't want to be a death eater immediately erases everything bad he's done. Like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Like I sympathize with him when, you know, later movies come on, but that doesn't mean like I'm like, oh yeah, we're totally cool like, with him. This guy's a douchebag. Like, like and what's worse well, is like right. I mean, but you gotta remember, again, these are thirteen year olds. Yeah, but like, you know, you have to I mean, like, you know, bullying is never a good thing, you know? And no, like, no, I'm not excusing his bullying. I'm saying that that's just how 13 year olds act they're dicks to each yeah. other but he also he was also <laughs> you know, raised in a household of that. well he was also raised in a household of absolute hatred it feels like from his yeah. father i'm not the way his mother acts later in the series which we'll get to i'm not so sure about how he was raised by her but you can tell he got a lot of his hatred and smugness from his dad yeah exactly but the thing is he was really spoiled yeah, but yeah, he's just so spoiled, and he like he always has like he always flex, he always like flexes how oh my father will hear about this. Like, get, shut the hell up, man! And, like, <laughs> it was worse. And, like, these guys are racist. He's a bully, and 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 in the fandom, the people ship him with Hermione for some reason. Like, Hermione would the real Hermione would never ever be with Draco whatsoever. Just like, watch some, this entire film. Argument is gone. Like, their argument for shipping is just destroyed immediately. Yeah, it doesn't make... Like, it's so... Like, they only do that because Drake and Hermione are hot. That's, or the actors that play oh, them are geez. hot. That, 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 that's the only reason why. But, like, it's not... It's not... It's not a, it's not a real relationship. Like, it's so... Drake's a racist, and Hermione... The real Hermione would never, ever... Like, ever. I'm pretty sure, like, the, actr- the actress of uh, Hermione did have a crush on the uh, actor of uh, Draco. Yeah, that that's why. That's why they ship that. That's yeah, the that's why. Reason why. But, like, it's, it, it's, not, it's not a real thing, you know? And, okay, can I, if I may, may, um, may I go on a tangent here of, like... I have a problem mm-hmm. with Sir Asgaman. But it, it, it's, not, it's, not oh. as, it's not as um, evident in... Um, books one and uh, films one and two, it's it's pretty evident here. If I may, oh, no. I think I know what you're leading on to now. So let's hear it. Okay, I hate, I hate, I hate, I, I really hate how Ron was done in this film. I really do. That's my one gripe of. That's my main gripe with this film because the film itself is good. I do not like what they did with Ron's character, especially with, especially in the book. Like he's. Every good moment. He has a lot of great moments in this movie. I, it, a, a lot of great moments in the book. They were stolen in this movie. One of my main points I hate is where in the book, Ron stands up on a broken leg. Like on a little broken leg. That's painful. And says, if you want to kill Harry, you have to kill us too. And I have no idea yeah. why why uh, it was stolen by Hermione. I really, really don't. Like that's uh, that's... So that's began a, the tradition of Hermione stealing Ron's stuff. Yeah, and basically that's the yeah. problem. That's the problem in this movie that I have because like you are stealing everything that is good about this character. Like, well, this is when they just decided to turn Ron into the buffoon sidekick. It felt like. Yeah, it was so insane. I do feel like he was he was underrepresented in like three through six. I feel like. Yeah. It's it's just so awful and. One of the, the one of the main changes I hate and like okay picture this Kevin I'll I'll, I'll give you a scenario. All right? Alrighty, I'm increasing the volume. I need to hear. All right, you All like right. Star you Wars. like you like Star Wars, right? Yeah. Okay, 
So imagine in some other universe, uh, there was a book instead of movies first. Like the books went first before a Star Wars movie. Like and, right. and, 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 and in the Empire Strikes Back book, you have the iconic Han and Leia, I love you, I know scene. Right? And then in the movie, it becomes, uh, uh, it becomes I love you, Han, and uh, Han says, screw you, Leila, S- screw you, Leila, uh, Leia, you're an asshole, and I don't want to see you again. That's basically what happened in Prisoner of Azkaban when, <laughs> when, Snape, <laughs> when Snape tells Hermione, you're such a know-it-all. In the book, Ron defends her and says, uh, you asked her a question. Why do you ask when she doesn't want to be, when you don't want to be told? She knows the answer. In the movie, Ron says, what does Ron say? Yeah, he's got a point, you know, like, what the hell is that? That's just, like, character destruction there. Like, Ron would never say that to her, to, 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 to a, Ron would never agree with Snape. Ron would never, like, def, um, agree with Snape on Hermione being, oh, that's so, that's just so out of character. I really don't like it at all. I really don't like what they did with that point of him in the movie. I really mm-hmm. don't. It's just so annoying. It just doesn't make sense. I, 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 rumors, I'm not sure if this is true. I really can't say. Rumors is that the, the script writer was biased to Hermione, so he gave Hermione all the good moments. That's, that's not right. I, mean, like, I can see it because I've heard stuff like that in other movies and TV shows also, where it's like, if they can tell that another actor is stronger or they think they can give a stronger performance with a certain line or action, they just do it. Because they know that that other actor will perform that scene better and it'll be more meaningful overall. Well, that's I mean, like I, I did hear like her, like uh, Emma Watson. I'm pretty. I don't. I don't know if this is true or not, but like, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere where like one fact, like I learned, was basically Emma Watson was so good, like uh, she usually had one take scenes. I'm pretty I sure. believe it. Yeah, but th- 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 that's the thing, you know. Like, um, despite it happening, Rupert Grint is also a really good actor, and I. I mean, like, Emma Watson's fine. In my opinion, okay, this is my opinion. People will get... And I, I've been shot so much in the Harry Potter fandom because of this. I think Emma Watson's just... She's fine, you know? She's she's not as good as everyone says she is when she acts. Like, she, there, there are, like there are points where, like, she's she's overcooking it. I feel like Rupert Grint, for what he was given with his character, he did a, he, he did a good job. A better job, really, than Watson. But... That's well, me. it's because, like I said, this is basically where they just turned Ron into, I mean, obviously Harry and Hermione were never together in any of these, but, I, and obviously Harry is the main character, but it always felt like Harry and Hermione were the main characters and Ron literally just became third wheel. Yeah, and it's that, that's the biggest sin of the entire franchise to me, because this is about the trio, not Harry, it's not the Harry and Hermione show, it's the Harry, Hermione, <laughs> and Ron show, it's not, it's not... You, you you leave one out. It's like leaving out Han Solo from the enti- from the original trilogy. It doesn't make sense, you know. Mhm. Doesn't make. You know, sense. I, I can see that. Yeah, like I, I I enjoyed Ron, but like I did feel like there was there was like some missing stuff for him. Yeah, and um. Yeah, because it's like they had the main character of Harry, and then you had the main girl, and then you had Harry's main best friend, who's a guy, and it's like. Well, now we have a guy, we have one girl, and we have two guys, but one of the guys' name is in the title, so obviously he's the main guy, and now we have our main girl, and we have our backup guy. I mean, yes. That's basically what it became. He was never a backup. He was backup. part of the trio. Like, he actually helped Harry and Hermione way more in the books. Than I, I can go on. I can really, like, have a, I have a full list, and I'm, I'm really going easy, but I, like, <laughs> I, 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 I really... I really don't like like what they did, especially here. Like in 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 one and two, I can forgive like some mistakes, like when Ron freaks out over the Devil's Snare. I mean, really, that doesn't happen in the book. He's level-headed, and in the movie, he freaks out. Like that that's a mi- that's a minor issue I can forgive. But like when when his lines are taken away and given to Hermione, when, it, it's just not right. You know, it doesn't make sense. Like you're depriving Ron of his good moments and it just feels bad you know yeah so yeah okay that, that's my rant over and and okay, okay one more I thing like to... oh. one more thing um really also what JK Rowling does is she frames 
Um, when Ron and Hermione have their arguments, it's like that's that's an iconic thing in the entire series. Ron and Hermione always fight. It's always somebody who has an argument. There, yeah. I think it's every book. There's one point where the three of them are not friends, or where at least one of them has been cast out. Yeah, and and yeah. And, and the thing is, um, in book four and seven, well, not really seven, but in book four, Ron's at fault. But book in book three and six, it's Hermione who's in the wrong. And I'll explain why. In book three. Um, the the sin that Hermione commits there is she's not emotionally resonant to what Ron is feeling. Like she says that when Scabbard's Scabbard's quote unquote dies, and we'll talk about that and talk about it in a bit. Um, Hermione in the book uh, is very much like we'll check, we'll we'll go around and check. Maybe he's not there. She doesn't admit the fact. That in the book, she seemed sad and sorry, but she wouldn't admit it really. Yeah, she wouldn't admit that she was wrong. She hates yeah. admitting. She- Wrong. And it, Whereas and in the movie, she was just kind of a bitch about it. Yeah, she was really just like, like Ron saying that my cat ate his rat. Of course he didn't. It's like, chill <laughs> out. Chill out. <laughs> the evidence is right there. Just say you're sorry for your cat. It's not like he's blaming you directly for it. Yeah, I just say you should. Yeah, and eventually, like, I mean, the, the cat is her responsibility. So, yeah, so the cat is she also didn't need to buy a cat when her best friend has a rat for a pet. I mean, like, no, like, no, I, I think it's just <laughs> pets. Having pets it's is fine. complicated. Pets are your pets are your pets you can tell. Pets are always your responsibility. Like, and even in the book, like when when Ron and Hermione re- reconcile, Hermione really says, like, I'm really, really sorry about Scabbers. Like, and she hugs him and everything. Like, was it? Didn't she cry in the book when that happened? Yeah, she cried. She, she said yeah. she said she was sorry about what happened with Scabbers and. I'm pretty and sure it was also because like Buckbeak was gonna get executed. I'm pretty sure. Or yeah, yeah, I, no. that that was the main point. And and yeah, because it was right before they ran out the back of the cabin. Yeah, that, that, that that's the problem because like she she in this in the in the book you can tell that she's not really emotionally resonant with the entire with the with the with the Two. run. Like she doesn't she just she 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 doesn't really get what what he's feeling and that's that's that, that's a problem you know and, and another thing i just i don't know where you'll fall on this later i never felt the chemistry between those two not in the movies no well uh, to me uh it, it, works. it works for me it works for me but uh i i, I can see why you don't but like, because yeah. there was such a stronger i mean and we'll get to it in deathly hallows part one and two she just Hermione and Harry just had such a stronger chemistry between the two of them because than the Harry even. Was okay, okay, I'm, I'm not going to get into that. That's for part six. Because the writer was biased to. I know. And, but it's but at this point they also had Rowling on board. They were close enough to the end of the books or the books coming out. So it's like this is where they really needed to start developing. I think what needed to happen later on, and I just I never felt the Hermione and Ron chemistry at all in in the books or in the movies in the books they were fine in the movies I didn't feel it yeah because yeah because in the movies literally it you if you if you'd never read the books it would take you completely by surprise what happens in part six and seven exactly but it's I like by reading the books read... I knew what was no, no. coming but it's almost like the writers were like banking on rolling maybe changing her mind and allowing Harry and Hermione to wind up together. Yeah, it doesn't make okay. any sense. Okay, wait, Chad. Chad, I must say that I actually saw the films first, and I actually thought, like, Ron and Hermione made a better couple, in my opinion. No, I'm not saying they didn't. I'm just saying I felt a better chemistry between Hermione and Harry. Like, I just – Ron just literally felt like a third wheel. He felt like the guy with no girlfriend hanging out with his two best friends who wound up dating each other. Yeah, because because the guy who wrote the films was Harry and Hermione <laughs> Bias. Allegedly, Santino. Allegedly. Okay, allegedly he was. But, like, <laughs> look, look, look how it was written. <laughs> Coming it back to this <laughs> no, It makes sense that he's biased. I mean, look at it. Harry and Hermione literally danced in Deathly House Part 1 for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> Do it. And, like, why? Why? Okay, I'm going to get into that. I'm gonna get into. Yep, that's a couple weeks. That's a couple weeks from now, but I'm but uh, teaser to what's for what's to come. But like seriously, like it doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, and and we'll be able to dive deeper into that when we get to bigger uh, examples of it. But yeah, yeah, but then, yeah, just 
So uh, overall, uh, Prisoner of Azkaban, we didn't even talk about Sirius at oh, all. Yeah, we, like, we didn't <laughs> even talk about we what didn't the even talk about the titular were. character. Actually, can I can I bring up like what the main uh, you know themes and conflicts were? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Alrighty. So like um, so basically the main theme and conflict was basically you know like dealing with uh your darkness inside you basically you know like Harry throughout the film. Oh, shoot. Whoops. I forgot to turn off the timer. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so basically it was darkness. Like, Harry, like, throughout the film, like, dwelled on his negative emotions. You know, like, his fears, hatred, like, confusion, loneliness. You know, because, like, the Dementors and all that. Because, like, you know, like, I'm pretty sure J.K. Rowling said, like, the Dementors were basically, like, depression, basically. Yeah, exactly. So, that, cool. But, that, like. You know, he would later on, and I, you could see this with, like, Harry riding Buckbeak and all that. He would later learn to, like, you know, enjoy the moments because, you know, they could cause powerful emotions and they can make him, you know, happy, basically. Yeah. Like, I, he may struggle with his, like, negative thoughts, but he can, you know, he can his positive thoughts can be just as strong as well. Exactly. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. I, I agree with the team being um, overcoming your inner darkness, your demons, and, you know, um, facing your fears. Basically, it's facing your fears, in my opinion. Because Harry is... The mentors are... R- Remus Lupin says that the mentors are fear incarnate. Like, uh, you, when you fear the mentors, you, fa- you are fearing fear itself. So, yeah. And my... We haven't, See, I think, I think they did a good job on that, but I think they did a better job in Order of the Phoenix after yeah. what happened at the yeah. end yeah. of Goblet of Fire. Agree. 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 Order of the Phoenix, so when, we, when we touch on that, I will, I will praise it for that, but um, we haven't even talked about Remus and Sirius. These are oh. like- uh, Remus was fine. I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think they gave him enough to do. In all honesty, he did good in the scenes he was in. Sirius, I, I thought was fine. Scene. Like, the scenes with him just felt rushed. If yeah. that makes sense, the dialogue yeah. felt very planned out. If that makes sense, it felt very scripted with the speed that they were all talking to each other in the shrieking shack. Yes, I agree. I totally agree with that. I really like it felt like yeah, every time one of them would say something, the other one would fire back at like a million miles an hour. Like they already had their entire speeches planned out. Like I almost liked how they portrayed Sirius in the book of three better. Where he was, like, when you when they first saw him in the Shrieking Shack, like, he came across more of, like, a serial killer. Where in the movie, he came across as just, like, a screaming madman. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, uh, in, ser- in the book series, is more silent. Like, he's, like, he's still, like, going through some shit. Like, well, it's um, from what happened to him from being surrendered by the Dementors for a decade. Exactly. Yeah, and also the fact that the real killer is, like, basically free and he was framed. hmm Yeah. Because I think they said in the book, could be wrong, he said the only thing that kept him sane was, one, that, knowing that Peter Pettigrew was alive, and because he would transform into the dog. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, the, yeah, um, that, that, that's one of also one of my main gripes with the film, the film series is that, we're not given enough time with Sirius. So when he dies in Order of the Phoenix, I really didn't feel any emotion. Like when he died in the book, yeah, I cried. But in the a movie, lot. It was yeah, yeah. In, in, in the movie, I, I thought we got like uh, plenty of good scenes, especially in the Order of the Phoenix. But uh, we'll get to that eventually. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So overall, Prisoner of Azkaban, in my opinion, wrap up. Uh, it's a good. It's a good movie. It's, a movie. Hey, it's my. It's still my number three. Yeah, it's my number yeah. three also. But in my opinion, there's um, if I'm if I if I'm going to be diehard HP fan here, what they did with Ron was unforgivable in this part, and it just really, it, it just really it detracts from the entire experience of watching it. Like legit, when I when I would see that scene again of like um Ron saying he's he's got a point, you know, I would really like roll my eyes and be like, oh come on, man, this is it's terrible what you're doing with it. it and think about life. Yeah, <laughs> but like um, here, like um, you know, I like it. Like there was a detail like I noticed, you know, like when the Dementors sucked the life out of uh, you know, or the happiness out of Harry, you know, just like it's getting sucked out. 
But like at the ending, you know, when Harry's like enjoying the moment, like it's, uh, you know, it's just like leaving like kind of like a weird uh, effect, like, you know, kind of like it's getting sucked out, but it isn't at the same time, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It was kind of like a weird reversal kind of. Yeah, exactly. So that, 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 that's my thing, you know. Um, uh, also, one of my main, I, oh, wait, uh, the Quidditch match is one, one of the best. I think, I think it's. I think it holds up the one in the rain. I think it's well done. It's like some last last minute points. I think it's well done. I don't like the fact that Harry got his fireball at the end because I would have loved. And that's how the movie ended too, with him flying into the camera. I was like, what? Yeah, like I I, I, I would want to end it like that, you know, because like you know he learns to enjoy the moment. I would. I guess, but. I guess, but like I would have wanted. I would have wanted. Uh, what's this? I would have wanted like. Uh, maybe Harry to win the Quidditch Cup. That's one of like the... It's one of the yeah, I guess I so. I wanted to see that. Yeah, I wanted to see that. I wanted to see him triumph over Malfoy and the Slytherins. I wouldn't have wanted to see that, really. And it's a shame oh, that they didn't... And then there was I a, don't know, there but was I feel a... like this film was already like jam-packed with so much stuff. Like I feel like that might make it a little unnecessarily longer, though. I'm sure they could have found some other stuff There's to cut out. Like, but you know it. what? There was There was one thing that they did leave out from the book, and... We really need to do some kind of show where we talk about, like, differences from the movies to the books because there's tons of them. But I think one of the biggest ones that they left out that kind of irritates me because Santino and I have talked about this uh, off the microphone, uh, about how they they really start shying away from ever showing any, like, negatives about Hermione. And they leave out one of the biggest ones. In the book, uh, in the movie and the book, obviously Harry's learning the Patronus and nobody else knows how. And in the book, it's literally right uh, at the end before they do the time travel. Harry and Hermione are left being surrounded by the Dementors. And he's like, you know, Hermione, think of the happiest thing you can do and say the same spell I am. And she winds up like passing out from what's going on. They completely left that out of the movie, which I thought would have been a perfect chance to show she can't do everything. She's yeah, not perfect. Exactly, yeah. I mean, and, like, I will say, like, I will, you know, I will agree with you there. Like, I do feel like they do that a little too much. Now, they do show moments, like, you know, like, she does have some weaknesses. But, yeah, I agree that they do The only show, time that, to me, away. they really, truly showed that was the broom in the first one when she couldn't get it right away. And she, like, was shocked that Harry was able to. Yeah, Other than I, that, I mean, she almost... Yes. Oh, I'm going to get killed for saying this, I'm sure. But it's like, and I know they're in school, so they're obviously all learning. But at times, it almost feels like she's the Mary Sue. Exactly. What can't she do? Yeah, she, she she's never. And that's what I mean. They're in school, so they are learning. They're learning new spells. They're learning new ways to do stuff. But it's like, she never fails, it feels like. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out. I'm going to get shot for this. I really feel like Hermione in like, by book four onwards, she can do anything, and she kind of gets Mary Sueified. She really does. She really has her like she's flawless. Like what? Yeah. She, what, what can she do wrong? But like even even in book seven, she had a hard time with stuff. Like really, she did. You know, like, when we get to when we get the Deathly Hallows, I'll like I'll mention some stuff. So, but I can't rebut you guys right now because that's way far ahead. So yeah, but yeah, no, it, this is just my opinion. I feel like Hermione really could have been toned down to be less perfect, like seriously. You know what? I agree with you there. You don't have to be so good at everything. Like, you, can be, you can fail at some things. It's fine, you know? It's, like, it's okay not to be perfect. And I mean, obviously her character is a perfectionist character, so it's in her nature. But at the same time, we also need to see some of those flaws come out so she can yeah, build because, on that. Because Hermione needs to be human and... and, and and basically, after book four or book five, she becomes God mode, and she doesn't really, and she just gets <laughs> and everything. Like yeah. I, I don't like it. Like, like seriously, um, I if they have her defeat Voldemort, I wouldn't have been surprised. I mean, like, oh, jeez, because like, <laughs> it's so, it's so. I mean, she probably would have used something other than the disarming spell. I mean, like, it's so. It's and so yet so Harry cool. still used just the disarming spell to beat Good him. lord, what we'll gets at that? It's so it's so hard for me to love. Like I love Emma Watson. As, Emma Watson as an actress, I really do. But and and I don't blame her. I don't blame her at all for the 
for what they did. I blame the writers and their shit script for making her money. <laughs> Whoa. A golden goddess. <laughs> a golden goddess at this point, but but one character broke an entire film. <laughs> <sighs> But uh, you don't know how he hates the Harry Potter films. No, I don't. I, I don't hate it. It's just. It, it's just. That I love the HP films, but it, it's just so. At, 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 times, just, uh, at times, I I, I want to pull my hair out at, at the at the insanity of what they do with Hermione and Ron. It's just so. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. That, that, I, I'll yeah, save. Yeah. I'll save more of my rants later in films, but yeah. <laughs> And but, Deathly Hallows, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be locked and loaded. Okay. Oh, 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 but no. Okay. I feel like we're focusing too much on negatives. Overall, yeah, I, overall, I, I love. Yes, Batman. it's still good. It's still it's really good. Still very good. I, I love it. I love the scenes. I love the visual effects. I love the time travel. I love. I love, I love how my, unique it is. Like it's truly like one of the most unique films I've probably ever seen. Yeah, I, I love Michael Gambon as, as Dumbledore. I really do. I love where I love the new direction it takes. Like Quaron was the perfect choice to go in a different direction after Columbus. It flows seamlessly, and I just feel like yes, uh, Azkaban, despite my issues with Ron and Hermione, it is a good film to watch. So yeah, it is the goat tier. No, no, not really. No, it's not the goat. <laughs> for me, it is like not you the best, but I'm understand. saying it's the goat tier for yeah. me. Yeah, for you it is, and I understand completely. It's fine, you know. Um, Azkaban really is a lot of people's a lot of people's favorites. I can see why. I can see why it shot well and all that. I just think overall, story wise, character wise, there are better films. There are two films that are better than Azkaban. But and we'll get also, that. Here's one more thing I'd like to bring up. Like Prisoner of Azkaban was actually like the lowest grossing film in the Harry Potter yeah. series. Now and it's like it's, beloved. Like yeah, you know, it's kind of like. Kind of like Empire Strikes Back scenario almost. Yeah, it makes yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, because like, it, um, it's so different. Like people don't uh, like. Okay, I'm gonna quote BVS. People fear what they don't. People hate what they don't understand. And before before um Azkaban came out, and it was such a different tone from the first two. The people, I, I'm sure at that time people didn't like it. But as as it as you grow older and you rewatch it, it ages like fine wine. So yeah. Yeah. So and amongst the three, Azkaban really is my favorite. So yeah. So here's to that. Oh, it is now. <laughs> amongst the three that I watched. Oh, I thought you meant us three. I was <laughs> like, what? No, amongst the three movies. Yeah, oh. Azkaban's my favorite. Oh yeah, of the first three movies, it's undoubtedly the best. Yeah. Like, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So but my favorite comes next, which we'll talk about next week. Okay, that's one of my least favorites, but okay, we're gonna. <laughs> I, mean, I know, I'm in such I a mean, minority. I'm mean, you know, gonna... I mean, being my favorite. We'll get to it soon, but like, so, but yeah. So yeah, uh, so guys, that was the first three Harry Potter films, and we kind of went over time over an hour, but it's okay because it was nice talking. It was nice hearing different opinions from Kevin and Chad. So listen up. Uh, if you want to hear more from Kevin, his link is in the channel below. He's the KFC. Right, right, Kevin? That's your channel, right? Yep, oh. my uh, channel is the KFC Kevin's Film Commentary. And um, uh, we'll be, and so Chad, Kevin, and I will be uh, back next week with the next three films, Goblet of Fire, Order of the Phoenix, and Half-Blood Prince. So guys, thank you, so much, thank you so, so much for listening to this. We hope you had a great time reminiscing on the first three HP films, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.